Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. We're based in the Chamonix Mountains in France, so we're a bit attached to all things alpine climbing. With that in mind, here's our top three Epic TV alpine and mountaineering missions. First up is Caroline Ciavaldini free climbing the Bois Petit on the Grand Capucin. Caroline, welcome to Climbing Daily. Uh, we've just been having fun on the wall behind us, but we're going to have a chat now a little bit about what you've been up to recently with the Bois Petit in Chamonix. Could you tell me a bit about, congratulations, can you tell me a little bit about climbing that amazing route? So, hi Climbing Daily. Um, the Bois Petit, wow, that was only a big week ago. Uh, I've been slowly landing down after, uh, well, that was my one year project, so <laughs> it was a big thing to do it. It took a little bit of time to realize. It's a high altitude al alpine route opened by Arno and Stephanie, uh, Arno Petit and Stephanie Bollet, uh, on Grand Capucin. I am the first one to not be able to situate that on the map, uh, even now. <laughs> Apparently, it's maybe the hardest uh, rock high altitude route in the Alps, but I've been doing one. Uh, I had never BV before. I'm not actually planning on taking over mountain ring. I'm a climber, you know. <laughs> so. And how long ago did this process start? Because this isn't the first time you've been up there, is it? I think it's just like for years I've heard about the Bois Petit on and on and on. And two years ago I got asked uh, what, what do you want to do actually. Uh, it was my North Face manager and uh, there's two routes that came in my mind. It was the Quarryman, which is an English route, yeah. and the Bois Petit. So last year I decided I, I would go in the route. Well, I only went in the first five pitches, got kicked. And I realized it was going to be a big project. and. If I, were, if I were to do that route, I would have to be really serious about it because I had none of the skills. Awesome, check out the link below for the full video. Next up is an awesome winter ascent of the Walker Spur on the Grand Jurass by UK alpinists Tom Livingston and Pete Graham. My name's Tom Livingstone and I currently live in North Wales. My name's Pete Graham and I'm from the Lake District and I live there. So we chose to do the Walker Spur. One reason for that is that a lot of the ice routes in Chamonix at the moment are in really poor condition because there's no ice. Um, whereas the Walker Spur is like basically a rock route. You can do it in whatever condition in winter, um, but it's not necessarily like a logical winter route to do. Some people might think it's a bit stupid. <laughs> How's the snow today, mate? Looks very good. How are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling alright, I'm feeling alright. We're feeling almost there, cold. we're almost there. Pretty hungry. <laughs> I'm shivering, which is quite entertaining. We're hopefully a pitch below the summit. We just well, yeah, waited I'm pretty sure we are a pitch below. Huh? It might be slightly more than 60 metres, but we're all good yeah. at one pitch. And the sleeping bag's in pretty good yeah. condition. Good half frost on it. We're not down yet, but we're most of the way up. <laughs> and I'm feeling pretty keen. Woohoo! Yeah, buddy! <laughs> the Walker Spur. Woo! Yeah, it's TD Plus. I don't even know what TD Plus is, actually. I don't know what any of the grades mean, to be honest. No. no. Um, ABO. Yeah, abominable. Abominable. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing about your next adventure. Next up, we had the opportunity to interview the winners of the Pile d'Or Mountaineering Awards. So here's Mick Fowler and Paul Ramsden talking about their ascent of Gave Ding in Nepal. Hi guys. Let's talk about the route first of all. Um, can you just tell me a bit about it? Yeah, it's, it's the extreme northwest of Nepal on the Nepal-Tibet border. 
and uh, it's a pretty remote area that's uh, well, it's four or five days walk from the, the nearest airstrip and that airstrip itself is four or five days walk from the nearest roadhead. Mm -hmm. So this, this big face as you observed it, it got narrower and narrower mm -hmm. as you discounted various options until you would basically end up with one feasible safe line. We kind of plan out the climb beforehand. In fact, we actually sit there and basically draw a pre-route topo. Okay. So we actually plan where we're going, where we can sleep, um, where variations might exist. So how long were you on the face for itself? Was it, was it five days on the face? Or? So from base camp it was a day's walk to the foot of the route and then five days climbing on the route mm -hmm. and then two days descending. For more interviews with the Pile d'Or winners, check out the link below and don't forget to comment and let us know what your favourite mountaineering moments from 2016 were. Thanks for watching. <laughs>